First, we need to make some changes to the Vortex Wireless 2. So open up the Vortex Wireless 2 preset editor and connect the Vortex Wireless 2 to the computer using a USB cable. Now, retrieve a preset. By default, the pads are set to play notes, so we need to change them if we want to use them to control things like stop, start and record. Change the type to CC Momentary. Leave the channel at 10. Leave the CC number as it is but make sure the CC number for all the pads are different. Change press to 127. Make sure the release is zero. And do this with all the pads. Now, if you know you're going to use a pad as a toggle switch, like for turning mute for a track on and off, then you can set up the pad as toggle instead of momentary. Set the on to 127, make sure off is zero. Then click on the colors, set color pad one to white. Make sure the color pad four is red. The main difference between CC momentary and CC toggle is the way that the pads react. With CC momentary, when you press on the pad, the light changes, but when you take your finger back off the pad, it goes back to the original color. Here I've set up the CC toggles to be white pads and then to go red when they're switched on. So when you press on the pad and switch on the toggle, the pad goes red. And when you press the pad again and the toggle goes off, the pad will go back to white. Next, if you go to touch ribbon, and look at bank one. You'll notice that the bank one is set up as channel one, CC one. If you go to tilt, you'll notice that that is also set to CC one, channel one, which means they are reacting exactly the same way as each other. So they do the same thing. Here, I'm just going to simply change the channel to two on the tilt. So they no longer control the same thing. Finally, I'm going to go to Program Change Keybed and I'm simply going to turn Change Program Send On Load from Yes to No. Once these changes have been done, simply send the preset back to the Vortex Wireless 2. So make sure that your Vortex Wireless 2 is connected to your computer and start up Studio 1. Then select create a new song. 
I'm just going to go with the default settings here. Right up here in Studio One, I'm going to go to Preferences. And you might be, the one of these headings at the top might be the default one open for you. But the one you want to click on is this one here, which is External Devices. And you'll notice there's nothing actually in this list at the moment. So I'm going to go down here to Add. And if you look in this list here, you'll find that there's no Alasis in there at all. There's no Vortex. So you're going to go over here where it says New Keyboard. So you just put in there Alasis. And Vortex Wireless 2. You don't have to put these in, you could just leave them as the defaults, but it's just easier for recognition later on if you've added this information. Now down here it's got MIDI channels, so these are the MIDI channels, you don't want to change that. You want to, but you want to change this one here, it says received from. You click on there and you should see that the Vortex Wireless 2, if it's switched on, is in the list. You don't want to touch the filters because the filters will just stop these things from working. You can't send to the vortex, so you don't want to put anything in there. But here, where it says split channels, you want to tick that one there. You can, if you want, also tick the default instrument input. When you finish there, click on OK. And now your vortex wireless 2 has appeared in the list. I'm going to click OK again. I'm going to go to instruments and I'm just going to pull up an instrument here. Any old one will do. Okay. And if you then drag down here you'll see that there's this group here. And I'm just going to close this instrument here. If you click on inputs you can select the Vortex Wireless 2 and it will also have a channel and you can click on the channel and you can choose different channels but I'm going to leave this one on channel 1. Now if you double click on the instrument this panel here will appear and if you click on external then this bit here will appear where it says the Vortex Wireless 2 and if you double click on that it will bring up this little box and I'm just going to go here at the end of it and I'm just going to drag that to extend it in length. Now click on where it says MIDI Learn. Now make sure that your Vortex is using the preset we set up earlier. So I set mine up as preset 7 so I've switched my Vortex to preset 7. Now I'm going to click on pad 6. Now, pad 6 has appeared on the in this box um, and it's shown as a rotary knob. Just under the rotary knob it says control 1. Well I'm going to click on that and I'm going to change that so it says pad 6. I'm going to right mouse click on this image of a knob and I'm going to change it. Now pad 6 is a momentary switch so I'm going to click on here where it says button press release and that sets up pad 6 now I'm going to click on pad 7 I'm going to change that to pad 7 click on right mouse click again and this is a toggle switch so I'm going to click on button on off if I now press on Pad 8. Once again, change that to Pad 8. That also is a toggle, so right mouse click and I'm going to go button on off there. And now I'm going to move Fader 1 up and down. I'm going to change that so it says Fader 1. Now right mouse click and I'm going to set that up as a fader. Now I'm not going to do all the other faders right now because they set up exactly the same. 
I'm going to go to the touch ribbon and I'm going to move my finger up and down the touch ribbon and that is touch ribbon 1 so I'm going to change that to touch ribbon 1 so I'm just going to write that as ribbon 1 and I'm going to right mouse click on that and I'm going to change it to fader next I'm going to turn on the tilt and as soon as I turn on the tilt you notice it has appeared here so I don't actually have to move the vortex around to get the tilt to appear so I'm going to change that to tilt and I'm going to leave that one on knob you could change that to fader if you wanted to as an alternative now there are other controls on the vortex that you could set up like the sustain button but if you add the sustain button to this list here it will actually stop working as a sustain button on the vortex so I wouldn't add anything else other than the pads the faders the touch ribbon and the tilt once you've finished click on MIDI learn again and that turns it off now these have been set now you'll notice now that if I press on pad 7 that it now lights up in this little gap at the bottom of this button which is not on pad 6 if I do the same with pad 8 I can do that and if I turn those pads off that little light bit there goes out once again you'll notice that if I move the ribbon up and down you can see that it's now represented here as this bar goes up and down and if I do the same with the fader that will appear to do the same now I'm just going to quickly add pads 1 2 and 3 which are all momentaries so I'm setting them as button press release pad 1 Now that I've done that, I'm going to turn off MIDI Learn. So I'm going to go to Pad 1 here, and I'm going to right mouse click, and up comes this message that says Assign Commands. I'm going to click on that, and you get this long list of different options. But I want it to be on... I want it to control Start, so I'm going to type in Start you'll notice that has shortened it down to all the start possibilities so I'm going to go down to transport here I'm going to click on toggle start okay so that's now been set up and you'll notice it now says above there toggle start so if I now press on pad 1 the bar starts moving for playing and if I press again, it stops. If I press pad 1 again, it continues playing from the same point. Now I'm going to go to pad 2, right mouse click, and then go to assign, and I want that one on stop. And that only gives me two options. So I'm going to click on stop there, and click OK. Now if I press on pad 1, it starts playing, and now if I press on pad two it stops at the same point again and I can press again and it goes back right to the beginning now pad three I want to use for record so I'm going to click right mouse button click assign I'm going to write record into the box and you'll see here transport record has come up so I'm click on that and now I can click on pad three and you'll see up here that it's recording now and if I click on pad 2 
it stops and I wasn't recording anything so there's nothing in that and if I click on pad 2 again it goes back to the beginning now I'm going to set up two more of these instruments so I'm going to pull up I will we'll go with JP pad put that one there and I'm going to drag that down and I'm going to change the inputs on that to the vortex and I'll leave it on channel one again close that one down there now I'm just going to bring up let's say pulse I'll click that there and if I drag that down I'm going to go inputs as the vortex again but I'm going to change that to channel two I'll close that there Now, what I want to do with these pads here, pad 7 and pad 8, is I want them to control whether the sound is on or off. So this is the monitor. So if you click on monitor here, and then you'll notice that if I now click on pad 7, Right, so I've clicked on pad 7 and you'll notice up here, pad 7 has appeared in this little box at the top here. Now if I right mouse click on the monitor, it'll allow me to assign this pad up here, which is monitor pad 7, to that monitor. And if I click on pad 8, remember these two are both toggle switches. Here up here now it says pad 8. And if I go to the second synth I've got here, right mouse click again on the monitor, I can set that one and I assign that to pad 8. So now if I press on pad 7 on the vortex, up here this has now been switched on and if I press it again it switches it off. And once again with pad 8 I can switch them on and off now to set up a fader what you need to do for that is you need to click on the fader so it's listed up here and then you can go and choose whatever it is that you want so I am going to set up fader 1 for this demonstration, I'm going to click here on the synth I've got for channel 2, and you'll see its insert is here. This is channel 2. So if I now right mouse click on the volume, I can assign that to fader 1. And that's assigned because fader 1 is up in here in this box here. Once again, if I now click on the ribbon, the ribbon will now appear up here so I can choose anything I want that has a connectivity to it to set it to that ribbon and again if I click on the tilt if I move the actual tilt on here the tilt will come up here and then I can use that and assign it and you can do that with all the pads the faders the touch ribbons and the tilt. If you've enjoyed this video, do give us the thumbs up and click on that subscribe button. Cheers.